Thank you very much for having me. And thank you very much for coming. My gosh, my hand out, my hand in my sweat. <laughs> Bless you. Please, please you. tell the Fire Ridge family a mm. little bit about JJ Bulls. Wow, a little bit. That's gonna be hard. Um, now tell us about JJ Bulls. How you came to be? Um, funny. That, uh, I'm gonna give you a little bit from the beginning. Mm. I started singing when I was three years old wow. um, at church. Yeah. Um, against my own will. Cause I'm free, innit? Yeah. And grandma and grandma was like, go up, they go sing, go, go, go. And I was like, Meh. but I done it. Um, I didn't enjoy it. I, I didn't enjoy it. But um, when I was like probably four or five, I joined, I joined the um, the choir. Okay. Like little kids, you know, there was enough of us. We were called the Buds of Promise. The Buds of Promise. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's a nice name, innit? Yeah. I, like thinking about it now, I'm like, God had a plan from early. Yeah. But obviously when you're young, like you're not thinking about nothing apart from I just don't want to be in this. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um so I've done that for a little while. Um when I got to about 11, 12, I'm I am i feeling like I'm a big man now mm. and don't want to be in church again. So decided to say, you know, come Sunday morning, I'm like, I'm not going. Uh so I stopped going to church. But um How your mum and dad think about that? Well, I lived with grandma and granddad. Okay. And so um I don't actually remember how they were about it, but I just know that I I, I just didn't go to church because I, I was with grandma and granddad until I was about six, seven, and then I met a new mum. Mm. So I guess it was kind of convenient for me because now I weren't under the belt, yeah. under the rules anymore kind of thing. Yeah. So I just didn't go to church anymore. But the singing was still there in terms of like, I still wanted to sing. And so there's an uncle of mine that um, he, has done the TK Maxx advert. I don't know if, you, if you're familiar. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a black guy mm. with white dreadlocks that goes yeah. around and looks. That's my uncle. Okay. And he's Barry Ford. Mm. Okay. And um, he at the time had his own studio up in um, Kilburn, I believe it was. Yeah. And I wrote my first song at his house on some piano. I can't play piano, but I'm just ping pong, ping pong. <laughs> yeah. And I wrote my first song called um, Samantha. And what age was you again? Twelve. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that song was about a girl that lived in my neighborhood that I fancied and I thought I was going to get her by writing the tune. Okay. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> she was on the thing like, ah, I'm a big woman to you, you know. Da, 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 da. She? But we're going to get to that. <laughs> we're going to get to that part. But, um, but with that song, it didn't really do anything. I got to um, do a, like an interview for the Voice newspaper. I had a double inside page, which was the boom at the yeah. time. And that was it really, I just had my picture in the paper. At that time, I was called Jason King okay. at the time. Yeah. Um, the picture was terrible. I needed a haircut. It, I had the worst shirt on ever. My, my shirt was like a, <laughs> like a rug, like the material, like a carpet material. Okay. I just looked yeah. awful, but was in the paper. I was in the paper. Yeah. And so, um, and that was it really. Um, uh, so from around 12, between 12 years old and about 19, I decided I wasn't doing the singing again. I was on a, I was on a girl team. And in my family, they're um, like, like, very musical. Okay. And my, I got two uncles 
the, um, the, the dancers, they, they would go around to all the sound systems and to all the dancers and the ravers and dance. Okay. And um, so obviously growing up, I used to watch them dance. Mm -hmm. Picked up a couple of moves. When I got to about 13, 14, I started my own dance group called um, Jason and the Argonauts, which consisted of me, my brother, and four of my cousins. Um, and I'm proud to say that we were about it at that time. At that time, we were about it because obviously we were young. We was kind of like that, the, the the new musical youth yeah. kind of thing. I like was just dancing with us doing, and I would probably sing a couple of songs, but it was more dancing. Mm. I would um, make up the routines and whatever, you know, and we would go places to residential homes and to um, youth clubs, and you know, yeah, we was about, we was about, it was a party. It still was about it. Yeah, and so um, so I done that for until I was about uh, about fifteen, not like to about fourteen. Okay. And then I decided to find girlfriend at fifteen. Got her pregnant at sixteen, and was a dad at seventeen. Childhood, child, childhood was was over. Yeah. Cause at seventeen now I needed to be da a dad. And I'm the kind of person, you know, if 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 I'm given a responsibility, mm. I like to handle my business. I've been like that from young. And so, um, at sixteen I applied for the Brits Performing Arts School. I got accepted, but I had a baby on the way. Yeah. And so I had to make a decision: Am I going to go to college, or am I going to be a hands-on dad? And I chose to be a hands-on dad. Oh, hard, seventeen, isn't yeah. it? It was very, very hard, I must say, because I, because of that, I, I lost part of my childhood. Mm. But I was raising my son, yeah. you know, and so that was a blessing. Yeah. So yeah, so um, I done that. Um, I raised my son till he was about six or seven years old. Then me and his mum broke up. Mm. It was a bad breakup. Because I think that what it was at the time was me being young, losing the childhood, there was frustrations. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Resentment. Warring to yeah. be a man and to a, a, a still be a child. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Warring. And so um, so that was a bad breakup. But um, throughout that time, from I would say from about uh, 12, 13 to about 19, even though I was, you know, raising my child and everything, music was still a major part of my life, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so when I got to about um, 18, 19 years old, I met, I met a guy up in High Wickham, because that's where I used to live at the time. Okay. And we um, formed a dance duo called Ninja Steppers. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where, where we got the name from. But, um, and so we used to, he used to wear my clothes, I used to wear his clothes, and then, um, he was bread dreams. Like, he, like, like, people thought he was my brother. Cause he used to wear my, my, my brief and my socks and he used to be tight like that. Yeah. He was tight. Yeah. You know, I'm a man, I, I don't lay down in bed with, with man. Yeah. But I was like, let's do top and tail. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. We were tight. Yeah. And so um, we formed this dance duo and we opened for Shabba Ranks. Really? Yeah, we opened for Sanchez. Mm -hmm. We opened for Shaka Demons and Pliers. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we were about, you know, we were about it still, you know? Yeah. Um, but that quickly faded because what was happening in between the singing was still tugging. Yeah. You know what I mean? Putting that tugging, tugging, tugging. So I might sing at a wedding or at a funeral or a christening, and, yeah. and every time I would sing, people would say to me, "Make sure you use that voice and make sure you that voice." Yeah. Well, I was like, yeah. "I'm dancing, man. You mean yeah. you're, you're open for Shabba?" <laughs> Even though I'm not getting paid, but me I'm open for shabba. Yeah. You know, so yeah. but um and so around 1920 I decided okay let me keep give this give this a try. Mm. And so I went for the 291 club at Hackney. Yeah. I entered that, came runner up. Yeah. I huh? I no no no. <laughs> Mm -mm. <laughs> no. What do you mean you remember? I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> I need to understand this. But you was at the, the 291 Club, I remember. No! L. <laughs> no, I do. Why do you think I shouldn't remember? I don't understand this. 
Mm. I don't understand this. Uh, now you guys are gonna make me ball in there. I'll tell you the truth. Honestly, that's wow. Over to you, JJ. Over to you. Byron family, this is a exclusive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I came runner up. <laughs> and the two moment, this is just funny, man. Yeah, I came runner up at you already know what I'm running up. <laughs> then I got asked if I could go back as a special guest. Mm -hmm. I was a madman them day there because I used to have bleach hair and mm -hmm. I used to make my own clothes then. So I used to come out like Batman with cape and all kind of madness. But um, I think that was just me warring with myself mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, expressing. It was, you know? A, it was a stage thing, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Not a life thing. No, nah, you know, yeah. and I just wanted to be, I wanted to be noticed. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, and so for me, I mean, even now as an artist, um, when I turn up, I believe that every artist, when you turn up, you should burn up. Yeah. You should make a statement when you, yeah. when you hit the stage. People are supposed to say, "What?" Well, like, you look like the artist. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so uh, that, that's just me personally. I love it. Um, um, I think you should leave a long-lasting impression. Yeah. You know, and so um. Many people think that I'm, a, I'm that guy that's up in the soul for da 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 da. No, I just know who I am. Mm. That's the difference. Yeah. And more so, I know who I am in Christ. Yeah. And that's just what it's about. Yeah. You know, but I, but I understand that the power of God can be offensive. Yeah. To a lot. I get that. Yeah. You know, so um, but yeah, so I done the two now one club. Um, I'm just skimming really. Um, I, I, I. I done um, in 2014, I believe it was. I done the Reggae Star Factor mm. up in West London. Reggae Star Factor. Okay. Yeah, that was um, put on um, by. Uh, there's a woman called D Bass. She plays. She plays. Play, uh, plays bass. Where was it? Where was it held? Um, at the Tabernacle. That's what I thought. Yeah, Tabernacle. Yeah, yeah. they were carnival. Was that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it was there. Yeah. Now, me personally, I wasn't really into, I'm not into the competition because I've done all of that coming up, school and, you know what I mean, I've done all, I, I, I done all of that. But um, what happened on my journey, I met a woman called Kitty Corbin. And um, we were blessed to um, meet each other on a theatre production that I took, took part in in 2012, 13. So you acted as well? Well, I wouldn't say, I've done a little bit of acting. You tried to skip over that bit. Yeah, because it wasn't really, mu it wasn't much of acting. It was just like a little, I had a little snippet in it. Okay. I was actually doing BBs for an artist called Bashira. Okay. Um, but there was a little, little segment in there that I done a little bit of talking, okay. which is a bit comical. Okay. But that was it. Okay. Nothing really to write home about. I would have liked to have had a more major role, but it yeah. was what it was. Yeah. But the experience of doing the BBs for Bashira mm. was tough. Okay. Um, I think there was like, six backing vocals but powerhouses yeah and so when we sang together we sound we sound like more than six yeah it was like that yeah. and so, so so i met kitty corbin on that journey and she was the one that told me about um the regular stuff like so. yeah and i was like nah man i'm, I'm not interested there's a competition thing. i'm like yeah. nah, 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 i'm done with all that and then she said to me yeah but it's with a live band now, at that point in my career, I hadn't worked with a live band. Okay. So I'm like, yo, <laughs> that's so that's interesting. Yeah. So I said, all right, cool, I'll give it a shot. And um, long story short, I think there was 280 something um, contestants. Con con contestants. And um, I came runner up. Mm. And, and I was the last man standing. Like, it, like, in the end, I was competing against all women. So, so, so they called me the 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 fawn. The what was it? What, what did they call me? When call me again? <laughs> oh yeah, the fawn amongst the roses. Oh, okay. That's what he called me. I like that That's title. Nice I like that. Yeah. Cause I was like, what? I'm the last man standing, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I lost to Shardell Roden. I don't know if you guys know about her, Shardell. No. Right, um, but you know, rightfully so, she, in, in my personal opinion, you know, she had the whole package and she was the winner. Okay. You know, um, and so 
but what I've done throughout the whole through every stage I had decided that if I'm going to go into this competition I'm going to go in there and make sure that I let people know who I am yeah and so every round that I went to I had 200 CDs with me and I gave them out for free wow every round every round and I went through right through to the end and then you're surprised that people know you come yeah. on yeah no hold on but L said 291 <laughs> it's true it's true it's true <laughs> it's true <laughs> Right, you look, you look when back, back, Way back. like Aaliyah, back, back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Do, okay. do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shocking. Like for me, that's shocking because a lot of people. What I've since I've arrived on the scene, so to speak, a lot of people are like, who's this guy? Who does he think he is? Like, but I've been about for a while. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And so, but but I understand. You know, they, they see someone come and that's just you know all of a sudden. And then, you know what I mean? And people yeah. got problems. Cool, but you know, it is what it is. you got to talk to God about that one. Yeah. Not, not to do with me. He gave me, I'm just here. So, but, uh, so, yeah, so once I've done the reggae stuff, facts, I must say, that's when it all began. Okay. That's when people started to say, okay, who's this guy? And I was like, okay, cool. Now I need to make sure that I reinforce it. Yeah. And that's what I've been doing ever since. Who or what inspired you to write? Wow. <laughs> well, all my songs that I write, they're all about real things. I don't, nothing, nothing's a made up story. So it? It's all real stuff. I made something that I've gone through. A lot of it is about what I've gone through, mm. but it might be someone that I know that's gone through a team. Or, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, because for me, I can't, I actually just cannot write. Jack and Nori. Yeah. I can't do it. Well it just don't. I, yeah, I can't. I can't do it. And so I've tried to. Like when I when I first started writing, when I was probably like in about uh, 2001, I was writing stuff that just made up stuff. Yeah. And, and it, no surprise, it just didn't get anywhere because it just wasn't real. Yeah. You know. And so for me, that's what inspires me. Yeah, just just real life. How did your family feel about your career, your career choice? Hmm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, my mum is my big fan. I'm gonna keep this thing at 100. My dad has a problem. Can you see it? Yeah, because he's, um, he's a Christian, but he's a very um, religious Christian. Okay. So, in his opinion, my music is not godly. Okay. So for me, if that's how you feel, that's fine. Mm. You stay over there, I stay over here. Yeah. And so that's how it is, yeah. keeping it real. Um, in terms of the rest of my family, I love them and I pray for them and I leave it just like that. Yeah. We leave it like that. Yeah. Would you tell the Fire Red family why music is important to you? Well, um, well, put it this way. I, 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 I started off singing mm. and tried to put it down. Yep. You danced. Didn't work. Danced. I, I made clothes, <laughs> hairdressing, barbering, mm. the, I, the, everything. You've done a little bit of painting and decorating, and it just all failed. Yeah. Everything failed, and it all kept on coming back to the same thing. But it didn't fail, it just came to a halt. Yes, corrected, I stand corrected, yeah. yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes, amen. I like that. Yeah, 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 I like that. I accept that. Mm. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so it was just, it, it, it is something that I, I, I really do believe that, um, I was born to do this and back to a question that you asked me about the name JJ born to sing because yeah. now I can answer that now is in 2010 um, I was going around as JJ J-A-Y J-A-Y yeah. and then crazily what, 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 what started happening people were introducing me as the man that is born to sing okay and, and I would go south London or East London and 
that's what the introduction was. Yeah. And I was like, hold on a minute, Lord, is this supposed to be, is this a thing? Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Because yeah. I'm like, it can't, it's not everyone coincidence everywhere. that everyone is now introducing yeah. me as the man that wants to sing. And I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to add it. And, I just, and since I added it, it's just flown. Really? Yeah, so that's how I knew. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I knew. Well, the next question was, do you believe in the Most High? Huh? <laughs> but I will go on to the next one, which says, how does he affect your works? How does what? The Most High. Oh, I can't do it without him. I simply just cannot do it without him. Um, I don't want to do it without him. How about that? How would you? I just don't. I just don't want to do it without him. Um, I, I think that um, music is a very, very powerful tool. And as we were talking earlier on, um, we need to be very mindful of what we're feeding our people yeah. because the music comes with a power, yeah. it comes with an energy. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? And so, um, uh, we see it, we see it, we see it. You know, there's I'm tearing down no genres, but there's certain genres that come with a certain vibe and a certain energy and attract certain clientele. Yeah. And so, for me, I'm about let's come and bless. Let's, if there's wickedness there, let's come and bless. Yeah, let's, yeah. Let's, let's come and bless. Yeah. And so that's what I'm about, yeah. So mm. could you tell the Fry Red family where your music has taken you? Mm. Wow, it, it, it's it's an interesting question. Um proud to say that you know um my name is now known overseas. Just like just last night actually I was speaking to a woman in Jamaica that was like, Can I have some of the music? I play on the station. I like to play your stuff, you know, and so um, I'm aware that it's taking me to Zimbabwe and you know Nigeria and America and you know, you know the, the Poland. Yeah. I, I, you know, we give God thanks, you know. So it's it's taking me places. I I do know that the works is not done yet. Yeah. There's many more places that you know that that we're about to fly, but yeah, I'm traveling. You are. Praise God. Which has ever been a memorable, most memorable place? Um. I think Giants of Lovers Rock for me was a big deal. Mm. Um, and the reason being is because I grew up with Lovers Rock. Yeah. And I now was in the green room with people that I was listening to when I was growing up. You was clubbing wallpaper too? I wouldn't say I was clubbing. <laughs> no, of course you wasn't. I would say I was sitting on the stairs watching people clubbing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was saying. <laughs> you know what they was that you're supposed to be in bed? Yeah. And, then, and, and you know like the family house had the basement. Yeah, you're looking through the railings. And I'm it. looking through the... Yeah, yeah. And, and I spent most of my um, childhood vexed because I couldn't understand why these people were dancing so close. <laughs> but hardly moving. Yeah. Forehead on forehead. Cigarettes burning but no one's smoking. Yeah. You know the one there? Yeah. And I was vexed all my life. I was like, vexed. Like, what is this? But yeah. And so, um, yeah, Giants Level of Love was a big deal for me. Um, and I was called back to do the Frankie Paul tribute as well. Okay. Which was a blessing as well because Frankie Paul was obviously a big a big inspiration you know, in my life as well. So, yeah. So, I would say, personally, yeah, that was a blessing and honor for me. Yeah. yeah. Talk about Frankie Paul and inspirations. Who were your musical inspirations? Uh, um, Dennis Brown. Obviously, we got Bob's and uh, Gregory's and Sugar, and yeah. but the predominant one in my life was Dennis. Yeah. My dad played him religious. My dad thought he was Dennis Brown. Yeah. Like he, he would walk around the house singing, and everything that Dennis would do, my dad would try to do it. Yeah. And so I had no choice in the matter. Dennis was just became my favorite artist. Became but Dennis yeah, the, yeah, Dennis. Dennis. <laughs> okay. Who have you done collaborations with and who would you like to do ah, collaborations with? I love this question. I lo <laughs> no, I love this question because for me, um, I've collaborated with <laughs> uh, Kitty Corbin, mm. Mandy Singer. Um, I've, I've just <laughs> completed an EP. I've done a song with Sandra Cross. Okay. Which I'm really, really gassed about. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sandra. Yeah, isn't it? Uh, the reason why I'm gassed about Sandra is because if you look into Sandra's career, she doesn't do collaborations. No. <laughs> no. So I'm just like... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. For me, for me, I'm just like, whoa. And me and Sandra, we're just like this. We, we, 
I'm pleased to say that I've got someone who's number in my phone and we talk. That's for me, that's like a big deal. It is. It's a big deal. Yeah. Um, She's in, another down to earth lady. Oh, yeah. Love her. Yeah. Love her. L- love her. L- love differently. And um, even when I was just in awe of her, because we actually recorded together okay. in the studio. You know, some people you could record separately. And join together. Yeah, and join together. Yeah, but she actually requested, let's do this together. And I was like, what? Mm. And so my journey down to the studio was knees and knock, and I sweat. <laughs> Sweat, you know. Yeah. But when I got there, she was just normal. She's she a normal is. individual. Yeah. Blessed. Yeah, she you is. know, so um, I'm very accommodating as well. In terms of doing collaborations, um, I would love to do a collaboration with Misha Paris. Mm-hmm. She just, yeah, she's that's a beast. Yeah. I've heard her sing live because. Um, I used to go to Rurak Church okay. in Brixton Hill and um, her sister, we were all in the same praise and worship team together okay. and their brother passed away mm. and so they had a funeral at the church and Misha sang okay. at the funeral and you've been all, in all since nah. listen I'm surprised that I, I I was able to live after that yeah, she just beast that's, that's, a, that, that, that's a beast for me and so um, I'd love to do a um, collaboration with her and I'd love to do a collaboration with Mary J. Blige mm. and Brandy. Yeah. I can see all three of them. What do you mean? What are you saying? No, I can, I can visualize them. Stop it. No, I can. Wow. Oh. <laughs> mm. Would you mind sharing with the Firebird family mm. the current struggles you think a recorded artist might may face? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I need to take a sip of water. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, let me. What I can do, I can't speak on behalf of the WR apart from myself. Um, jealousy, envy, bad mind, backbiting. Um, it's a lot. Uh, since I've been on on the map, the fight has been real. The struggle has been real. It's been, it's been, it's almost been like it feels like people are trying to literally curse you. Yeah. It's deep like that. It's, it's, it's deep like that, you know. And um, to the point that I've actually heard that um, people are actually trying to work certain things against Born to Sing. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard it. Never prosper. Yeah, I heard it, you know, yeah. and so it's a real, it, it, it's, it's a real, and it's a shame because that's the jealousy. Yeah, but you know what? It, what's a crying shame for me is because my Bible tells me that our gift makes room for us. Mm. So therefore, we're not supposed to be envious or jealous of each other's yes. gifts and talents because yes. if it was given unto me and given unto you and given to you, God has made room for everyone. Yeah. And so there shouldn't be an issue. But then the, it goes back to who are they serving and who do they who do they, who do they know as their God? Not yeah. knocking nobody. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying the word that I read tells me that there's room for all of us, yeah. and so there's, there's no need for competition. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's a shame, and it's also a shame that um, I, I, I will say this on record also that there's some some bigger artists than myself that have inspired me that have shown me the same thing. Mm. I'm not very supportive. Very disappointed. Yeah. Very, very disappointed because my melodies, my harmonies, my songwriting, you had played a major part in it and now you want to fight me down. Yeah. Couldn't have expected to rise so high. <laughs> indeed. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. So, uh, crying shame, but you know what? There's no, from, on my part, there's, there's no bad feeling. Mm. I know envy because I, if you know better, you do better. Yeah. And I do know better. Yeah. You know, exactly. and so yeah, so yeah. If you could give advice to an aspiring artist, what would it be? Mm. Do you know what? Um, always be real to your real and true to yourself. Mm. Because in this game, there's a lot of people that want to do it for fame and fortune. That's not a reason no. to want to do this thing. No. You should really want to do this thing to make a difference, impact someone else's life. Yeah. Because for me, I, I, I truly believe that life that we're living 
is not for ourselves, it's for someone else. And so if you're gonna do this thing, do this thing so you can inspire and encourage, uplift, edify, yeah. and educate someone else, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. You know, um, I always believe that if someone comes to see an artist mm. perform, they should not leave the same way that they came in. Yeah, yeah it's true. You should make a difference yeah. in someone's life, you know, so yeah. Just, just be true and real to yourself. What artist do you listen to? Nah! <laughs> <laughs> wow, how, how long have we got? Um, I'm quite eclectic when it comes to music. Um, I listen to gospel music, uh, Fred, Fred Hammond is, is, is my guy, Fred Hammond is my guy. Um, I need to say something about Fred, um, he came on years ago, I think it must have been like 2003, 4, and I went to see him in concert, and um, he had all these supporting acts come on, and when he came on, Fred came on the stage, right, and Fred said, he moved the mic stand and put the mic stand on the, on the side of the stage. I don't think what's he doing. And he went over and stood and he said, at this time, I'm not taking centre stage because it belongs to God. Oh, God bless him. And I was like, you know, do you know how deep that was for me? I, I will always remember that man for that. Yeah. That he said, centre stage is not for me, man, it's for God. Let me stand at the side. And for a good few songs, he just stood on the, on the side. Really? Yeah, it really inspired me. So I listened to Fred Kirk Franklin Standard Procedures, um, uh, Clark Sisters Standard. Um, I still um, like I listen to my R and B. I'm a, like Tank, yeah. like Joel. Um, what like, about your singing? Would you sing that across the genres, or do you just stay within? Yeah, me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I sing R and B. Yeah. Um, I sing. Obviously, you know, I keep everything inspirational, I keep everything clean. Mm. Oh, I would sing a love song, you know. Yeah. yeah I would sing a love song. Yeah. Yeah, because cause, cause God is all about love. And so, so m many people <laughs> don't, don't agree. Don't agree, because they think that if you're a Christian, you shouldn't sing secular music. Yeah. But you know what? That's between me and God. Yeah. That's not between me and you and God. Yeah. That's between me and God. And so, I, I'm quite comfortable in my own skin to know that God is love and it's okay to sing a love song. Yeah. Have you been surprised by the response by the UK music lovers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, to be fair, uh, I mean, I have some really faithful fans, you know. I have some <laughs> faithful people that follow me everywhere I go, you know. Yeah. I really do, and um, I'm really grateful for that. And I'm, you know what? That must, there must be something why they're following you. But, yes. Not gratitude. Yes. And I, I really hope that it's because that they follow me as I follow Christ. Mm. I really hope that that's what it is. It does come out. Did, it, did you do expel it? I do. You do. Yes. Yeah. You do. I'm really because you know sometimes sometimes we can't get complacent and take things for granted, and so sometimes I stop and I and I have to look and question and say, Jay, are you are no, you giving you are. the right thing? Yeah. No, I'm really pleased to hear that, thank you. No, you do. Honestly, I'm really pleased to hear that. So, um, and I've come to a point in my career that I can go go on a stage and sing my song and I don't have to sing because everyone was singing for me. Yeah. That's a blessing. Yeah. That's a dream come true for me. I've always wanted to write a song and the crowd sing my song. They anyway. finish it for you. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, blessings. Can you share with the Fireman family what plans you have currently? <laughs> I like I, I like you guys. You guys are nice, you know. <laughs> no, because you know what it is. Because sometimes you can have interviews and you find yourself just looking at each other like this. I like, know I'm not saying that. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I it's do. nice. No, thank you. Um, well, I, can I hold up my flower? Of course you can. I am on the 26th of July, um, 2020. I'm going to be having a show called Restoration. Mm -hmm. And um, we're close. Because um, a show called Restoration. Yes, zoom in, pan in, in so. <laughs> Bless you. No, you can hold that one. Yeah, and so um, basically, it's going to be a night of restoration. Um, the reason why it's called Restoration is that um, in 2015, I had a dream, and God spoke to me and said to me that I should put on a show mm -hmm. because in 2020, He wants to restore everything 
that has been lost. Mm. And I said, okay, Lord, I did have a bit of a battle with it because mm. I was afraid of the magnitude of what God was showing me. Yeah. But um, but I now realize that He has fully equipped me for for this um this event. And so it's gonna be myself. I've got a host called Pastor Kevin. Um, couldn't see the comedian. I'm yeah. sure you guys are yeah. familiar with him. Um, and we've got Annette B from Birmingham. Um, Lady Lex, you guys know about Lady Lex. Um, Tasha C. Thomas and Winsome Moncrief. I'm quite, quite sure you guys know about Winsome. And the DJ from, I think she's from Nottingham. Her name is DJ Nardlocks. Um, and so on the night, we're going to be having um, uh, BSL, British Sign Language, throughout the whole show. Okay. Yeah, because we want to. You know, make everyone come in and, and get a piece of yeah. piece of God, you know? Yeah. And so um so yeah, um, so we've got British Sign Language. Uh and there's a big surprise on the night that I can't reveal at the moment because it's a surprise. <laughs> M- many of us don't know what, what surprise means. Okay. <laughs> 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 <In it. laughs> yeah, so um yeah, twenty sixth of July. Um tickets, um early bird tickets are twenty five pounds. Uh, general tickets of thirty pounds, guys. Please, um, yeah, get involved. It's gonna be at Stratford, Stratford Theatre. It's, it's gonna be in Stratford. A real blessing. I'm not just saying it because I'm putting it on, mm. but I truly believe that God will be in the house, and you will not leave the same way that you came in. I'm, I'm making a declaration. Good to you. You will not leave the same. Please feel free to make a shout out to all your well wishes. Everybody. <laughs> it's the safest way. Yeah. Cause you know what happens when you forget someone's name, people get offended. Yeah. And so I just want to person. make a shout out to everybody, haters, lovers, everybody. Shout out to everyone. That's how I like to do it. How can the Fire Red family keep in contact with you? Let's exchange numbers. <laughs> <laughs> can you be found on um, Facebook and Instagram? And yes. The, um, I would say go into Google or your, or your search engine, wherever it is that you use, and type in JJ Born to Sing. That's J A Y J A Y B O R N, the number two S I N G, and that's a long one. And all my stuff is supposed to come up. Okay. I'm pleased to say, praise God. We have to ask you about the two JJ Born to Sing things the glasses and the beard. How does the beard get to be so full and healthy and shiny and just there? Well, well it's, it's a sensitive subject for me, really. <laughs> Is it really? Yes, because I grow the beard because my head top don't grow. <laughs> my hair just Sorry. don't, it, it just doesn't grow really? anymore. Really? Are you serious? Yeah, and that's why I grow the beard. Because that's the way I've got left. And okay. so I'm trying to hold on to it. Because um, I used to have really long hair, you know, uh, down my back. Cane, Cane rope. And you know, with the pulling, and I was a man who got my hair done every two weeks. Yeah. And so the all the pulling and you know, Talking. yeah. So it took its toll. And I'm not one of them ones that's gonna try and comb over. <laughs> that. Thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> but the but the hair the hair suits you like that. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Oh. And, really? the, and the beard, yeah. Thank you. Well, I mean, I have to make the beard work. It does. I'm literally, I'm like, you have to work, beard. It's mm. healthy. Well, I mean, it does get shampoo and condition. Yeah, 100%. I'm not joking. Like, castor oil and mm. black seed oil and all that goes into it. Yeah. Yeah, I have to look after it because I'm just like, Jay, you cannot afford to, to, to look too. like an olive. <laughs> you, you know? An olive, you know. <laughs> you know, if I lose the beard, I'm going to look like an olive. <laughs> And so I'm just I'm looking after it differently. Uh, the, the glasses is um like I said, if you're gonna be the artist, be the artist. Yeah. Do the thing. Yeah. And I, I and me, I would encourage every artist that like, have a look. Yeah. Have, make a statement. You know? Yeah. No, don't get me wrong, if I'm not saying try and be something that you're not. Yeah. But think about it and think about how you can not look like regular Joe. Yeah. Mm. Whilst remaining humble. Wow. You see, I like the way that you just dash the fire. <laughs> but, but looking humble, but being humble. Yeah. yeah no, but it's, it's key because um, it's easy to get conceited. It's, yeah. it's easy. It, it is easy. And so, for me, anytime I, I do a performance, 
you may, I don't know if you see it, but you may see it, I disappear. Okay. And the reason why I disappear is because I go and find a corner and I give God thanks immediately because yeah. I don't want to walk around all puffed up. Okay. I make sure that I give all glory to God yeah. and then I go and greet the people. You could never slow them down. All right, fire red station. You could never slow them down. No, 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 no. Yeah. Fire, 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 f